Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more seconds. Um, this is an, an interactive, informative webinar, so I want to thank you all for attending today's um, webinar. Also, some general housekeeping items. This is a recorded webinar, so in case you have to step out, answer a phone call, um, definitely um, you'll be receiving today's presentation along with the recording from our um, webinar um, through our YouTube channel. This is a good opportunity for you to connect um, and int introduce yourself, network amongst all of our participants, um, what type of business you have, what type of industry, um, are you already certified in the county or doing business with the Miami-Dade Public School Board, you know, with the public schools? Um, so it's a good opportunity for you so like that junior will be able to have a good idea of everyone that's present today. And, and we'll be more than happy to have that connection, the connectivity and collaboration as well. So thank you all for attending today's webinar. So we'll go ahead and get started right now. Um, in case if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, strongly encourage you to put them in the Q&A. And as I will be more than happy to, um, to ask those questions on your behalf. So now uh, we are part of the Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program. It is funded through a cooperative agreement through the Small Business Administration. It was established in the, by the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 that uses the community navigator approach to assist you, the small business owners. The program is comprised as a lead hub. In this case, it is the Florida SBDC at FIU, I'm working with a network of spoke organizations to assist small businesses here in the Miami-Dade County. The focus is placed on businesses owned by women, veteran, as well as socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Along with the Florida SBDC at FIU, we have six great organizations that we're working together um, at no cost. And we have Ascendis, Branches, the EDC of South Miami-Dade, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, Los Peda, and Startup FIU Procurement. In addition with today's um, webinar, we have one of our great colleagues and spokes, Gina Ortella from the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. And she'll um, talk briefly of what the chamber has in the upcoming events and um, areas of assistance that they can provide. So Gina, the floor is yours. Yes, good, good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, also welcome to this webinar. Um, I hope this, um, this webinar would provide you with a lot of um, inside information on how to do uh, business with the um, school, school board. Um, again, Gina Ortella, um, the Miami-Dade Chamber has been around since 1974 as a, and have been advocating on behalf of black and brown businesses in Miami-Dade County. Um, our technical assistance um, department, um, we provide um, help you know, in many different topics, um, depending on your business needs, whether it's um, how how to, uh, whether it is your with help with your business plan, marketing, how to um, yeah. navigate the um, process of government contracting um, to business, how to um, get prepared uh, to become bankable for um, a loan. Um, we have, um, you know, at the end of this um, presentation, you will see, you know, um, the link where you can reach out to us uh, through the Navigator program to set up an appointment for a one on one consultation. And like uh, Jesus mentioned, which is free, and also for us to help you and then connect you with the other spokes as well um, through. The navigator program. Um, we also have uh, on every Tuesday at four o'clock we have a small business meetup that we do, which where we bring a plethora of um, you know upcoming business opportunities and um, leaders in the community. Then and so you can um, you know get to know what's going on and also be able to network with fellow entrepreneurs. So um, again, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to assist you. That's what we are here for. 
And I look forward as well in hearing uh, Mr. Anderson's presentation. Thank you, Gina. And also in the chat, uh, Gina will be putting her contact information in case if you're interested for the Tuesday meetup and it's really insightful and uh, engaging. So, so just a shameless plug as well. <laughs> and um, if your business is located in Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade, Monroe County, we're more than happy to assist you. If you're outside of that region, um, by all means, I put my email in the chat. So I'll be more than happy to connect you with your local small business uh, resource. In addition, the Miami Day, the Miami Day Business Navigator uh, program, it's once again, it's creating that network to work with small businesses in the three pillars, consulting, mentoring, and training. Um, right here is a good website um, for you to like and subscribe our, our YouTube channel. That is where we have a plethora of all the webinars and also the engagement and the conversation to enhance those conversations with the respective consultants once you're scheduling meetings with them. Um, also visit our website at miamibusinessnavigator.com. Um, so you'll be up to, up to the know of all the upcoming events that we have, information, resources, once again, to assist you, the small business owners. And then um, now allow me to introduce you to Junior Anderson as he'll be presenting today's uh, webinar. So Junior, um, introduce yourself, what you do, and, uh, and we'll take it from there. All right, thank you very much, Jesus. I just wanna say before I start that the um, Chamber is a fantastic resource. Um, we do a lot of referrals to the Chamber as well. So honestly, um, I would advise you if you've not done so already, to try and get some information um, after this uh, event regarding the chamber, because they are a really great resource and we do a lot of uh, uh, referrals and partners partnership with them as well. So anyway, first of all, my name is Junior Anderson. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm the district director in the Office of Economic Opportunity. And you're wondering, okay, so who are they? Basically what it is, is that we advocate for small, micro, minority, and women-owned businesses. That's who we advocate for. Um, and I do a lot of events um, relating to getting the word out about getting certified and the advantages of getting certified for a small and micro business, and also looking at the benefits. We also, what we do is, I do, I'm um, gonna talk about this um, as we go along the presentation. Um, I also, do a lot of um, what we call um, education about how to do business with this, uh, the, the the actual school board, and also I look at the um, the different things that problems that you encounter, and we try to help you along the way, and the different programs that we have. So there's a lot of things going on, but the overview of this is. Um, the mission is to help small businesses, of course. This presentation is going to go briefly about the quoting and bidding process. Um, and we're going to look also at the application process to become a vendor and the certification and the program that we have called the Supplier Development Program, which is a, a program I've just spoken to you about, a six-week program about how to do business with the school board and other resources and opportunities. All right. So the next slide, please. About us. All right. So Miami-Dade County Public Schools is the third largest school district in the United States and has been A-rated for four consecutive years. So as you can imagine, um, we buy everything. We were fourth up until um, er, um, late last year. So now we've officially become the third largest. So based upon that, there are about 400 school locations and we have about 345,000 students. The square mileage, um, of the um, Miami-Dade County Public Schools as a whole is 2,000 square miles, and it represents over 160 countries, the students, and 56 different languages. Um, so basically, we've got a procurement, which actually buys the procurement department, gets all the, um, the supplies and goods and services that's required of the school board. But remember, they are not the people that actually uh, request that. The, the departments are the ones that uh, put the specifications um, for whatever they need 
and they ask procurement to buy it. So procurement are not the ones who actually decide what to buy. They just make sure it's procured legally and within school board policy and within rules. So we service, like I said, over 300 schools. MDCPS has an estimated annual revenue in goods and services of roughly 500 million per year. So that's outside of the um, construction side of the house, the facilities side of the house. So this is goods and services, 500 million. All right. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay. This is just a brief um, overview of the procurement process relating to um, how you bid and quotes and stuff like that. All right. So procurement, <clears throat> they issue different solicitations. So, for instance, anything that's between one cent and 999.99, so anything under $1,000, right, only needs one quote, one quote. But the thing is, that item must not be under contract. So if, if we've got a contract of, I don't know, $300,000 to provide pens and a department wants to buy something for under a thousand dollars, we have to go buy the contract, right? But if there's no contract to buy pens and a department wants to buy the value of the pen for under a grand, thousand dollars, then we can go with just one person. We can select that person for the um, to provide the service. We don't need one quote for that. Now, when it's between one thousand dollars and 49,999, so really between 1,000 and under 50 grand, $50,000. We need three quotes, of which one must be a certified firm or a minority woman owned small business. So that already puts you in the game. You understand? So, what happens sometimes in a situation like that, when it's under 50,000, um, departments call the Office of Economic Opportunity and say, do we have any certified firm that probably could provide this? So basically that's that. Um, the over 50,000 is the official solicitation. So that has to be approved by the board and it's uh, $50,000 above. And it goes through a process. It could be a two, three week process. Um, and they have pre-bid conferences and stuff like that where you could attend. So to find out more about the bid, but this is a, a, a really um, process that is a long process. Well, it could take up to four weeks or more uh, before the contract is awarded with that. All right, next slide, please. <clears throat> now, how to apply to be a vendor with the school board. Now, one of the things that I've got to say to you is that you have to um, realize that Miami-Dade County Public Schools and Miami-Dade County are two separate entities. Because some people, well, quite a number of people, when I've spoken to, I've spoken to, they said, oh, right, they want to get certified with us. Oh, oh, I've already, I'm a registered vendor with, with you guys. And I said, no, you, when we look, no, you're not. But what it is, is that they're a registered vendor with Miami-Dade County, not Miami-Dade County Public Schools. And we are two different entities. So we have to go through the process of getting uh, registered with us. And what we need is a copy of your W-9 and also your federal tax ID number. Also, you need a local county business tax receipt. And if you're a nonprofit, a copy of your 501C. And obviously, you've got to be active, re actively registered on the in the Florida Department of Corporation, Sunbiz. You've got to be definitely active on Sundays, all right? Next slide. Now, we're gonna talk about certification. We're gonna go through the eligibilities and the benefits, okay? So we certify small micro businesses, veteran businesses, minority and women owned businesses, all right? Next slide, please. To be eligible, to um, be certified by Miami-Dade County Public Schools. You've got to be independently owned and operated. Must have, have an actual residence in the tri-county area of West pa of Palm Beach and Miami-Dade County and Broward County. 
and your business has to be in operation for at least a minimum of 12 months. So if you're not actually um, uh, in a bit in business that you're not really uh, eligible to be certified yet. You've got to be in business for at least a minimum of 12 months. All right. Um, obviously, just like the uh, getting registered as a vendor, you got to have your local business tax receipts and all required licenses. You've got to be a United States citizen. Um, and you've also, or a, a green card or permanent resident, all right? Um, you've got to um, have 200, employ less than 200 full-time employees. So if you, if you actually employ less than 200, then you're fine. If you, if you actually employ more than 200, you can't get certified with us. Um, you've got to be 51% controlled and, and owned, all right? If you're a minority or whatever, it has to be 51% um, on minority owned. Small or micro business, you know, it is what it is. So whatever it is, you've got to make sure that you fit our criteria. You've got to have a net worth of 5 million or less. All right. So anybody that's revenues are less than 5 million net worth, you're good. All right. In totality of your assets and everything else. All right. Next slide, please. What are the benefits of certification? Now, this is the important bit. You're thinking, why am I going to go through all that? Now, before I say anything, you've actually got to get, the reason why I mentioned the reg getting registered first is that in order to get certified with the school board, you have to be registered um, first, vendor registered, and then you get certified. Um, when you're registered as a vendor, we could do business with anybody in New York, from anywhere in the country, New York, um, California, wherever. So you have to be, in order to get paid by the school board, you have to be registered. So that's why, that's the first thing that you have to do. And that goes through, that goes through procurement. And then we certify you. Our office is the one, the Office of Economic Opportunity is the one that goes through your eligibility and certifies you. So I just want to make that clear uh, of what's happening there. Um, certification benefits, you get first tier referrals to other departments. So you're saying, okay, what do you mean exactly? What that means is, is that right now at the school, Miami Dade County Public Schools, um, all the schools have a 15% um, target or goal that they have to spend with their, spend their budget with, with, with a certified firm. So basically, 15% of their discretionary budget is supposed to be sent with a, spent with a certified firm. So there's more, um, how can I say, activity going around in the schools because they now know, recently it's a new initiative, that they, that's what they need to do. So what happens is we get calls um, from schools or departments to say, listen, um, do, do you have a certified firm that provides... Um, this product, or I'd say a pen, I like using pen as an example, that, that provides a pen, and you've got a certified firm that could do that, and we can actually give them the, the name of a, a firm that's able to do that. Or they may need three quotes um, related to certified firms that they would like to do business with. So that's why we give, we call it first tier referrals. We refer our certified firms to the, the schools. Um, you get a prominent listing in our online directory of certified firms and, and also a printed directory. What that means is, is that we have free of charge, and I, I forgot to mention certification with us is free of charge, okay? Free of charge, no charge to you. But what I'm gonna say is, we also have a, a book that we, a directory that we actually uh, put all the firms in and we send it to the schools, each school, has a directory of our certified firms in there. So if they're looking for a certain service or product, they can look in the book and they will see that there. So you'll be in there, all right? Um, that's a really a, a big advantage as well. Also, one of the things is, is that there's sheltered market opportunities for certified firms to compete for school district contracts. What does that mean? That means in the past, we have what we call, um, before a bid goes out, the 50,000 plus bid goes out. What happens is we have what we call a goal setting committee. And the goal setting committee looks at 
um, firms that are um, certified, if there are more than three or four, and if this industry fits um, something that we could just set aside for certified firms. So what happened is during the PP COVID, for instance, an example of that would be COVID. When the we did our PP uh, uh, bid, the uh, personal protection equipment bid, right? It was basically a masks and all that. We said, all right, what we're going to do is we looked, we saw that there were a number of firms that were certified that would, would be able to provide this, all these products. So what happened was we set aside those products for those firms, just certified firms. So there was a frenzy of people wanting to get certified <laughs> because it was only certified firms that could bid for that, for those products, for that bid, right? So, um, and it was too late. That's why I tell people all the time, nobody knew at the time before COVID that we were going to be doing PPEs and all the rest of it, you know, a lot of masks, a lot of sanitary stuff, all those kinds. Of, we didn't know we were going to be doing that, right? But what I'm saying is get prepared. It's a lesson in being prepared because you may not see right now your opportunity, an opportunity in your industry with the school board. But that doesn't mean to say, because it's very fluid, it changes from week to week, month to month, right? Depending on what a department requests or what they want. So basically, you've got to be prepared. So those people that were prepared were able to bid for the PPE equipment because it was just for certified firms. All right? Um, there are also mandatory subcontracting opportunities with prime vendors. So what that means is, is that if you're in the um, construction side of the house, um, the goal setting committee puts goals that um, a prime should have, say, um, I don't know, 20% of the workforce or whatever should be, um, should be um, certified firms or minority or woman owned or small or micro business. Um, they should be small or micro, whatever it is, a certified firm. So there's goals attached to it with 20%. So the primes who receive the contract, they've got to make sure that they employ some of our certified firms to be a part of it, whether it be electrical trade, whatever it is, electrical, plumbing, um, outreach, um, um, whatever it may be in the construction field, they've got to make sure that their subcontractors are uh, certified with us. You also get um, a notice of upcoming contracting opportunities. So what happens when you're a certified firm, when we see some opportunities that come out and we think, and we've got a list of vendors that, that are certified that are able to provide that service or product, we will uh, notify you as well. And you also get a listing up in our business directory. Which is what we need to talk about. All right. So, Certification, certification in three easy steps. So you can register your business with Miami-Dade County Public Schools through the um, vendor application process in procurement. So procurement, that's the link to it as well. Um, the, see that link? Uh, basically what it is, you can get registered through there or you can contact our procurement department or the procurement website also. Um, also, what you can do, you get apply, apply to be certified. You can go on that link and submit your documents. That's also on the oeo.dateschools.net department um, website. Um, but what normally we do, we do a lot of, is that you can call me or contact me or whatever you want to do, um, or the office, and we will refer you over to our certification team that can guide you about how to go through get the application process and applying to, be, to get certified. You also will, um, you can, we all your reviews your uh, online application and determine whether the business is eligible for certification. So when you go on that link, the application link, um, and it's on the OEO website, and that link is there, and we're going to give the link to you also. Um, when you go on there, you can actually, we will review it to make sure it's fine. And if something's not quite right, or you know, we find out you're not eligible to be, um, to get certified, then we will let you know. And honestly, the certification team of Eric Bryant and Herman Gonzalez 
are excellent. They will go through it with you um, step by step, um, tell you exactly what you need to do or whatever. They can't do it, for, but they will go through, what, tell you all the steps that you need to, to, to take. So there's never been a problem with that. We, we really do help. And if there's a problem, you know, you always, you can always contact me. And I've got a colleague called Romeo Romulus, who I work with in outreach as well. Um, he's a, a person that you can always contact and we refer you over to our certification people. All righty, next slide, please. Okay, this is an important part of it. Um, the supply development program, you say to yourself, okay, I get certified, what next? What do I do? Well, we um, created a supply development program which is, um, it's been in existence now for the past four years. And it's been uh, quite successful. We can't promise everyone that they're gonna get a contract, but what we can promise you is that you get a full understanding of how to do business with the school board. And also you can apply some of the techniques in doing business with other agencies. So the overview of what I'm telling you is this, is that when you go on this program, the six week program that we do, um, what it used to be on a Tuesday um, for six consecutive Tuesdays. Now uh, we have to change it to six consecutive Thursdays. Um, we're gonna kick it off sometime in September, October, and we normally have three cohorts um, in a year. So what we do in this program is learn to develop sample responses for bids and RFPs, because some people don't know how to go through the process of, you know, they found it really daunting to see a bid that's out there. And they're wondering, what should I do? What should I, where do I look to see what I need to complete or what I, what I need to do, what do I do? So we go through that. And who does that? Our chief procurement officer. We have actually got the chief procurement officer, which is unusual of an, a large organization like ourselves that will go through it for two, for two of the six weeks. The last two weeks of it, she goes through how, to submit a bid and to get an understanding of what you need to do and what the different parts of the bid mean. So she goes through all that and also the importance of attending a pre-bid conference. So those are the things we do. We also look at developing the marketing plan for your for MDCPS location. That could be coming a lobbyist, doing other things, website, who you need to see. So we, we develop a marketing plan of letting people know in our organization, how do I, you know, I'm here. I'm, I can provide this. So we try and develop a marketing plan for you. And we have some marketing people that come in as well. We also create templates for a sample budget. Um, some people, they, they don't know where they are exactly, their finances. So we make sure we do that um, for people to look and see where they are, where they should be and what their goals are. So budgets are very, very important. So we go through that too. And we teach you how to access upcoming opportunities with the school board. and want you to look at your pricing st strategy as well. That's something that's very important. People are not sure how to price themselves. So do they price too low that they make a loss because they want to win the bid? Or they price too high and they don't win the bid? So we try to, you know, we tell people all the different techniques that probably need to do, you know, regarding looking at a pricing strategy. Um, and also we look at access to capital, um, big problem for big for businesses, um, gain information, you know, you get information like that. We invite people that provide um, like SBA and some of the other organizations as well that uh, provide um, information about how to get capital. And of course, very important, you're going to connect with our office, who's your advocate, and the procurement department as well, because they're they're on this as well. They're part of this program as well. Um, so you're going to connect with those network and it's very important to develop, you know, like relationships and stuff. So it's very important to network with people. All right. Next slide, please. Um, this is for goods and services, um, upcoming opportunities. Um, these are stuff like hood cleaning. You see, we, like I said, we buy everything, right? Hood cleaning, telecom services. These are coming up in the next few months. Identity management. Um, charter school employment, uh, re-employment, copy paper, rental of cups and gowns. I mean, the list goes on. Carpet, tile, and resilient floor finish, asphalt, paving, custodial chemicals. It goes on. Next slide. 
air conditioning. I see the whole list continues, right? Security guard services. And I'm going to tell you something. That was one thing that I could tell you. Um, the There was a gentleman that came on our program and he um, is just coming up again to be renewed. And he um, credited our program for helping him win the security contract for the whole school district. And he credited our program. And one of the be benefits of being certified as well, he was able to get the pro, he get to do to to win the contract, be awarded the contract, and basically he, um, yeah, he got the whole contract for the whole school board. And there were some other people like that too that have been on the supply development program. So, um, if anything, I'm going to make sure that you um, you can contact me relating to getting information regarding the supply development program, and I'm going to also give you um, a link as well at some point where you can apply to be on the program. All right. So these are all the other stuff, opportunities, legal services, external audit, intercom, fuel storage tanks. You see, they've got so many different things. Um, next slide. This is our department. Um, you can see we have um, Ms. Jennifer Andreo. She is the head of our department. She's the assistant superintendent of equity and diversity. And um, her mission is completely um, committed to trying to help and advocate for the small businesses. Um, and that's what we all do. Um, we've got Eric Bryant there. We've got to get to know him. He's a certification guy there. Jeanette Garcia, she's part of our compliance team. Herman Gonzalez, certification. And Miss Michelle Hicks-Levy, pre-qualification. Christine Howard, pre-qualification. And Ms. Denise Vincent Mills, contract compliance. And my partner there, Mr. Romeo Romulus, he's um, works with me in outreach, so you see him in events and on the supply development program with me as well. We've got Mr. Michael Scott and Mr. Ed Stokes, who are part of the contract compliance team, and Mr. George Wright, who's the district director in certification. All right. So basically, that's the full team of OEO, the Office of Economic Opportunity, your advocates, okay? <laughs> All right. Next. So, you got any questions? Um, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat. And I'm sure, um, I think Hazel is gonna probably be asking. Um, yes, I actually have some questions for you. Um, do you also have medical bids? And if so, how do you also notify companies? Yeah, we do have, um, we've had things like, I mean, during COVID as well and whatever, you have like, um, it was like bids, for nursing, like some nursing bids and stuff like that for in some of the schools where they needed some kind of medical assistance. I think, I'm not sure when that bid expires. They do also have some other um, medical supplies bids also. Um, we do have a bid relating to that as well. And those are things, like I said, if you get certified with us, you, you will get notified relating to those bids, as well as a courtesy. Um, uh, uh, email from procurement. Um, our, let me also mention, like I said to you, those things, uh, 50,000 plus and all the rest of it, they're on demand star. I just want to make that clear. You can view the bids on procurement website, but those 50,000 plus bids are on demand star. Okay. And is there a registration for businesses over $5 million? Over $5 million? Yes. They can, of course, it, what I'm saying is the registration, you can register as a business if you have over $5 million, of course. But the thing is, you could live anywhere. But the certification, it's your net worth has to be under $5 million of your business to be certified and get the benefits of certification. Because can I just say something, Hazel? Go for it. It's, it's, your, it's I, your webinar, Junior. I it's like all yours. I liken the uh, certification to David um, versus Goliath. Now, you know the story of David versus Goliath, right? Goliath was a big giant, all this, you know, the muscles, everything that he had, a daunting figure. And David was a small guy, right? With those three rocks. And he, he used those little small three rock, rocks and he used it, he threw it at David and David lost. He won the battle. David won the battle. I liken certification to be what to be one of your three rocks against the big guys. 
all right, the big companies. And that's where the benefits come in. So that's why the net worth of a company has to be less than $5 million because we're trying to help small and micro companies. If you want to be, if you, you can still bid, people bid because the big guys normally win the bids, right? Most of the time. So you, you register as a, a vendor with the school board and you can register as a lobbyist for, as a, um, to try and present your products to, to the department heads, as do certified firms can do that also if they've got a product that they want to present to um, departments. But yes, you just register them. You can register them if you're over 5 million, but you can't become certified because it's the smaller guys that need the help a little bit more. Are there bids to evaluate and assess programs and or activities? Evaluate and assess programs. Um, you know what? I think there is. I believe there is, but I can get back to you on that one. But yeah, I think there. Are, I've seen an evaluation of programs. But what type of program, though? What type of program is the person asking about? Was it just general? It, it was just general. Okay. Yeah, I think there. I think there are uh, bids like that. But um, don't quote me on that. But I think I've seen it in the past. I've seen it, but I'll double check. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um... Also, where can I find the bids? Are the bids sent through emails? Is it a website? Yes. And that's what we're going to go through right now. All right. <laughs> we knew that was coming. Yep. Uh, we'll go through at the end of the, uh, the, the questions. We're going to go through it. Yep. Um, and Asus is going to go through it with you. Yep. And then um, I just have two more. And then afterwards, we could go back and forth with the questions. So and I'll have another one. Is it um, it's hard for small businesses owners with large companies? Or is it hard for small business owners with the large companies, right? When you say small with a large company, what, I'm not quite. It's a bit of a. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, if, if you could elaborate more in the chat, and I'll be able to to ask that question. Yeah, because it's and a bit. Then, um, also, are nonprofits considered for bids for programs? Of course, but the the problem. This is another problem, right? This is another thing I'm gonna outline. Very good questions, I must say. The nonprofits cannot be certified though. Nonprofits cannot be certified with Miami Dade County Public Schools. We don't certify nonprofits. Yeah. But you can you can bid, you can get registered as a vendor, follow the pro process of um applying and getting registered as a vendor. I think that was on the um the slide that that's one of the things, you know, you register on Sunbiz if you're a nonprofit 501c. Yes, the, we have we do business with a lot of nonprofits. But you just cannot be get the benefits of certification. And um, and just going over with the actual, it was over here, right? Yes, that's the application for vendor. So you see, vendor registration. We do business. You we can't get paid with the school board unless you register as a vendor. So anybody can register as a vendor, okay? Um, but is the is the basically to be certified and getting the benefits of being certified as a small business, you they won't be able to get. But you can, of course, we, have, we do a lot of business with um, registered, with nonprofits. We do a lot of business with them, but it's not, we can't certify you as a small business. And on top of that, um, you know, obviously we have great consultants. Um, obviously you have already registered the business, but you don't have your local county business tax receipt. Uh, we have specialized consultants that can assist you to obtain um, that receipt as well. So you become a vendor um, for the for the school system absolutely and so that's, it's, it's always crucial that, that that's a that's a really important um entity that or item that you need to have a successful business venture yes and then um what about llc's junior mm -hmm. um okay can they also obtain the um certification yeah of course any small yeah llc's whatever it would be okay. yeah Honestly, you could get yeah, everybody as not, but not nonprofits. Just nonprofits cannot get the certification, but you can do business with us. And there are, and honestly, there are, um, there are a lot of the bids. There are quite a few bids that come out, big bids that come out through the year that nonprofits apply for, but they just can't be certified. Yeah. Um, then, um, yes, yeah, so you will be receiving today's presentation along with the recording and also the the two links um, that we'll be discussing right now in terms of any opportunities and also um, 
what is currently um, out there for the new RFPs and new bids. And then, uh, Junior, before we proceed, I just have one last question. Then afterwards, we could go back and forth. Um, do contracts have a time limit? Yes. Of course, yes, yes. With goods and services, sometimes normally um, three, I would say three years, could be two to three years. Um, it can be three years. And then we have an option of extensions where we can probably extend a bid um, over one year extension. But that's that's basically um, determined by the school board whether they're going to extend a bid or, um, and if it's in the actual, um, the writing of the bid that we can extend it. So that's basically, yes, we can. But it's normally two to three years is the normal term bid. And then we may have the option to extend and renew with the, with the, the, the awarded vendor. With money. And um, one of the other things I want to say before we go on this, and I just want to tell you what the value, I think this will highlight the value of being certified also, as well as you being notified by the schools, you've got, you're on a, in our directory, um, all the other benefits, points that are awarded. So let me give you an example of being certified. We've got you've got two businesses that bid, right? That bid on pens, a pen. One business um, is not certified, and they bid one dollar, right? One dollar. They're not certified, right? Big company, one dollar. They, they bid on the pen. The certified company bid one dollar five. Okay, one dollar five. In the normal scheme of things, is the first company that's not certified that would win the one dollar, right? The one dollar five company, the certified company would lose normally, right? But when you're certified. And if there's points awarded, right? So when that, remember I told you before, there's a goal setting committee before a bid is released that determines what the, um, if there are any goals and points that could be given to a, a certified firm. If the bid, if the bid itself stipulates and is decided by the goal setting committee that um, we're gonna award six points or 6% of whatever it is to a certified firm, what that means is, one the one dollar five that the certified firm bid that it would have lost under normal circumstances six points were deducted from that dollar five and it would be evaluated at 99 cents not the dollar five but it would be evaluated at 99 cents that the certified firm placed in there and then that would mean the first firm that was not certified would lose because it would be 99 cents evaluated Six cents knocked off the dollar five from the certified per bid. So it'd be 99 cents. And then there would be one dollar. So basically the certified firm would win, but they'd be paid at the dollar five. So you still be paid at your dollar five, even though you're evaluated at 99 cents. You get what I'm saying? So that is the, the, the beauty of also being certified. And that's if the goal setting committee determines that points can be awarded or deduction points can be awarded to um, a certified firm that bid on that product or service. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. And do, do you want to go over more in depth of the new bids and the RFPs? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Go to the new bids there. Um, these are bids that are out right now, bids and RFPs. Um, these are electronic marquee signage. Um, cleaning the supply program, universal ID software, um, apprentice training program, bleacher repair and replacement, digital content and review services, and auditorium seating. These are out right now. So these are things um, you see the uh, due date of these bids. The first one is August. In the second column, those are the due dates for these bids. So you can still bid on these right now, okay? They're out. Um, the last one is the auditorium seating, and it's August first. So you better get your skates on for that one because that would be that's Tuesday, right? That's going to be the deadline for that. I must tell you, um, the fourth, the fifth column, PB, um, PB conference. This is very important. These are for bids are over fifty thousand, right? This is where this you can see this, right? 
The pre-bid conference is very important for you to attend um, because that's where you can ask questions. Because when a bid goes out, right, to the public, there's a cone of silence and the procurement department cannot speak or district staff cannot speak to people about the bid. It has to be some in writing sometimes we're able to, people can respond, but otherwise they can't talk about in detail about the bid. In the pre-bid conference, when you go there, there's a date and time on the, the bid that's been released of a pre-bid conference. So there's the pre-bid conference date and the deadline that you have to complete, send, um, you have to, um, you have to submit the bid, right? So the pre-bid conference date, and people forget to attend this. And now we're doing it quite virtually now. And you can ask as much questions about the bid that you want. Basically, there is, um, you can ask questions relating to um, how the specifications were, came about. If you don't understand a certain part of the bid that you were looking at, you don't understand it, you can ask questions. And procurement and the depart department that requested this product and service will be there. So for instance, if it was a maintenance related, um, I don't know, if it was nails or something like that, that's going out. And the maintenance, someone from maintenance will be there and someone from procurement. Because remember, procurement are not the, the content expert. They're not the, the, the expert in that area. They're just making sure that the, the bid goes out with, within school board policy and evaluates it, all right? The people with the knowledge of the, the bid, complete in-depth knowledge is the, the, the department head because they're the ones who question it. So you can ask as many questions. And I've seen in a pre-bid conference where the um, a question's been asked and said, why didn't you do it this way? Why do you make it this way? There's new technology that comes out that does this. And they've actually made a change to the bid. It's called an addendum. Um, and they've made a change to the bid and then based upon the pre-bid conference and they released the new, the new addendum to the bid, the change to the bid. And then what happens is they extend the, the bid deadline again. So if it was August 1st, like for this, it would go to August 8th, a week later, to give people time to readjust and, and submit their bid. Because they've said, oh, that was a great idea. It didn't include that in the bid um, when it was released. So those are things that happen. That's why I say it's very important. And I say to people, it's important too to partner, partner with each other if possible. And I've seen partnerships work. People have attended my um, the supply development program. I've seen where it works. People have come to me and said, Junior, I'm so glad I met someone on your program. And we're in the same industry. Now I'm doing work with them and I'm, I'm getting contracts with different agencies. Um, so partnering is important. I tell people, if you have, if, if a bid requires 10 trucks and you don't have 10 trucks, you have four and you know someone else that has six, right? You just partner and come together. Obviously, you've got to trust each other. You've got to make sure that you're on the same page, whatever it is. But it makes sense to partner. And that's another aspect of doing things, too. So this is um, to do with pre-bid conference. This is where you can see all the new bids. Um, the cone of silence is on. Like I said, that's where the staff can't really speak to you uh, in detail about any of those bids that have been released until it's awarded. All righty. And this is for goods and services. This here is the upcoming opportunities. I think some of this needs to be um, updated a little bit, but here, go on there, click on here. Okay. Yes. So basically, this is what I was, this is what I said. The one that I've sent to you um, right now, well, it's in the PowerPoint presentation, is some of these things are in here too. Um, but mine is very, very, I just got this yesterday, so that's the reason why it's in my PowerPoint. This here is some of the stuff that's going out right now. Um, some are out right now, the refrigeration that's gone already. Um, some are out right now in June. But you see, some of the other ones coming up in August, um, that was in my um, PowerPoint presentation, continue going down. Yeah, things coming up in August. Um, September, you see classroom supplies and equipment, musical instruments, art supplies in September, um, August again, external audit for the GOB system and graduation streaming. So now keep looking at this website too for the upcoming opportunities when it's coming up, okay? 
But the, like I said, there's different tabs. The ones that are out now, and these and these contain also those that are also currently out, but also things that will be coming up. And you've got the contact info also of the buyer in each of those areas. You see the last column, you see that with their email. Okay, and then uh, just give me one second, Junior. Let me just go to the very end. Yeah, so so pretty much uh junior. So if so pretty much um if anyone wants to meet with you, um so forth, is, is there a cost? Is it is it free? Um free. It's free. I'm gonna put my, my number down there. You can give them my number. I mean, when you're sending the email, I can put my number. Perfect. In. Perfect. And then um also are there bids for interpretation and translation services? Yes, I know there was. Yeah, I've seen it. Definitely, I've seen that. I'm not sure where it is now. I don't know if it's when it expires. Um, so I can find that out as well for you. Mm -hmm. now, you can also follow us, first of all, um, find out about information on Twitter. Sending it to everyone um, is uh, pound MDCPS OEO. All right. Um, you can follow us on Twitter um, also. All right. When is the, the, the PB conference held? Okay, like I said to you, when a bid goes out, there will be a pre-bid conference. You see the column, I think it was the fifth column. The date, you can actually see the date on the bid itself. You can see the date on the bid. So when the bid is released, it will tell you when the pre-bid conference is going to be. Right here. So if you go go to the first column, go to the first column. This is the bid, the first bid, right? That's when there's a change to the preview columns. Go to the first. That bid is the, the first column is the bid. Look at the bid. That's the deadline date we have to submit it. Could you click on that? Are you able to click on that bid just yeah. for the example? In the bid, you can see where the pre-bid conference is. The, that fifth column is where there was a change to the pre-bid conference date. you're able to see oh i'm sorry i'm sorry be able to see the there we go ah so this is a bit right that was released all right the release date was july 21st the submission deadline date you see the due date is thursday august 17th so it's in a couple of weeks you have to make sure you submit your bid and that has to be done through demand star okay um go down Yeah, keep going. Yeah, stop. So you see on that page, the pre-bid conference where you can ask as many questions about this bid is on August 3rd. It's in section three in the calendar, August 3rd at nine o'clock and it's via Zoom. So anytime you see, you see the bid released, this is where you go. You can see, you'll see it in the bid itself, in the bid packet that's been released. And, no, then, no, and after you after you finish the after the pre-bid conference is finished, um, you can still um, submit questions to whoever it is and go down. Yeah, you can submit questions to procurement re relating to the bid, the pre-bid conference. You've got any additional questions, but then it's closed off at five p.m. that day. So you can't ask the next day after the pre-bid conference any more questions. And at the same time, we have consultants that can assist you with the bidding process, the, the estimation, um, and uh, with all different um, file sets to make sure that you have the capacity the, um, of uh, doing this bid, you know, at the same time to have a good cash flow as well. Yeah. Um, on, the, on that side. So mm -hmm. we have consultants, like I said, it's, it's no cost to you to, to address all, all of these issues. And cross the T's and dot the I's, even a second set of eyes to make sure that everything is in good standing because it's a first impression. Absolutely. It is first impression. Absolutely correct. And um, like I said, you know, I, I can't stress enough the importance because people get hung up totally on the deadline of submitting a bid 
and it's important. You've got to. You've got to submit it by that time. But at the same time, you've got to look. If you don't understand the bid and you want to get to make sure that you win or award awarded the bid, I should say, you've got should apply. You should actually go to the pre-bid conference. But that only applies to fifty thousand plus um, uh, bids. All right, Junior. I have uh, multiple questions for you. So you ready? Yep. Go All on. Right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it possible to see the scope of work while their status is pending? What do you say? Of course, because when you say pet status pending, I mean, what I, has it been? If it's been released, are you talking about? Or? I, I would assume so on the um, on the on the bids and RFPs on the new ones. If if the new bids, if there's new bids and RFPs, and it's pending, it basically means that you can go. It, it's on the the bid and RFP. You can see it. It should be there. It's in a certain section on the the packet itself when it's released. Um, you can see it. It's in there in the scope. In the scope of work is in a certain section of the the bid itself um or the rfp you can see what the specification it may say listen for a pen i want stainless steel pens of certain dimensions of six inches whatever giant pen i want whatever whatever you'll see that in the scope of work in the um in the bid is there a person in ndcps that specifically specifically works with nonprofits? Um, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, um, not that I know of, but we do a lot of work with them. Um, and I know school operations does. Um, but one of the things that I would suggest you do is um, go on our, my supply development, our supply development program, because then we'll talk to you about becoming a lobbyist and finding out who the people are that you may need to speak to. So that's one of the things that I would advise you to do. So if you're interested, email me um, or uh, Mr. Romulus related to that. I mean, I can put my email address also in the um, chat, okay. but you can also give it um, to, to. Yeah, I will. And Jesus, I, I think I'm um, going back to the scope of work question. I think um, I highly encourage people to attend the pre-bid conference um, call where they can ask questions about if mm -hmm. something is not clear and so yeah and that's what i would say that's what i was saying and I'm glad, I'm glad gina doubled down on that as well the thing is is that i can't stress to you enough how important it is because like i said to you in the past you see the the fifth column that we looked at the first column is where the bid packet is in, right on the website the fifth column is where there was a change to the date of the pre-bid because what happened was a question was asked in the original pre-bid conference, and they made a change based on probably a question that was um, put to um, the department in the pre-bid who wanted this, the product or service. And then I've told it, there's been times when they've had to change it based upon questions asked by people who were, who were interested in bidding. Because they, the department didn't know about a new, whatever it would be, a new, I don't know, technology, a piece of technology or something that they didn't know about. And it's actually, we've had to make an addendum. An addendum is just a fancy word of saying, MDCPS, I've made a change to the bid uh, based upon the pre-bid conference and we made a change and we're making a change to the specifications or the scope of work. You understand what I'm saying? Or could it could be something else that happened as well, why there was a change. But, while the preview content was changed, but that, that can happen as well. So it's very important people to meet people in the same um, industry, to partner and everything else. Very important. To, uh, people can't stress it enough. People get bored with me talking about it, but it's very, very important. Thank you, Gina, for doubling down on that. And then uh, are there bids for IT? Of course. <laughs> in fact, it's funny that should be, um, that's really a great, you know, that's an amazing question. The reason why I say it's an amazing question, because I'm actually, yesterday, I'm organizing in April the ITS and IT um, Instructional Technology Vendor Fair for April. So it was really, yesterday I was talking to the two heads of the department about it. So we're in a tentative stage sometime in April. We're going to have a vendor fair. And what that means is it's a matchmaking vendor fair. What that means is that you actually come to the vendor fair and you're going to meet the heads of the departments of ITS and their staff. 
and they can talk to you about certain things relating to um, that. We have four big vendor fairs, um, the transportation, um, food, um, maintenance, and ITS. Those are the four big spenders. And we also do the after school activities um, program fair that we do also. So yeah, we do a lot of different fairs. Are there bids for tutoring services? Yeah, there was. Yeah, I think there was one that was out. I think the person missed out on it, actually. It was out. Um, it's still to be awarded. Um, still to be, still pending award. So whoever that was has missed out on that one. But there, probably there may be some more coming up as well. Okay, so if I have any questions on the bid, do we contact that email that came out um, next to it? on the um on the upcoming solicitations um yeah you can you can contact them what is a it's on it it's actually on there you can contact them or you can try and contact me this is my email yeah. put my email address there on there and i would have put mr romy the system okay um services. Okay. well yeah you can, you can go on that email yep. as well. that's on there in the slide. Um, are there bits for coding programs for after school uh, or coding programs during school? Sorry, I didn't hear. Did you say coding programs? Coding, coding. Clothing, clothing programs. No, no, coding, coding, like I'm a computer coder. Oh, I'm, to be honest with you, I don't think so, no. I don't think there's a bit for that. Sure. Um, how how will your company receive notifications if, if you have been awarded to the bid? Oh no, the procurement was in contact with me. Um, if, first of all, what happens is it gets, um, it goes onto the um, website. The 50,000 plus, it goes onto the website. So you have to go to the board, it goes to the board for approval. Um, and then basically you'll see it awarded in, on the website, on the procurement.dayschools.net website. But procurement would be obviously in contact with you as well after it's been published on the website. Okay. I I may have actually answered uh, asked all the all the questions. So, yep. So I want to thank um Gina. Uh, so I also want to thank Junior uh, for, for today's participation in today's webinar. Um all like I said all of the um per, uh, the the links, the emails, recordings, everything will be uh, will be shared to you. So if there's any questions, concerns, don't hesitate. Uh, feel free to send us an email as uh, we're more than happy to connect you to provide you the necessary tools and guidance for the next phase of your business venture. So thank you all for attending today's webinar and I'll be looking forward to speaking to you soon. Take care, everyone. All right. All right bye.